Good morning, everybody. Today is Friday, April 10th, and the story I have to share with you today is called Salamander Season. Um, right now, amphibians of all kinds, frogs and salamanders, newts, efts, are all um, loving this these spring temperatures. So um, in the last week or so, the temperatures have been above 40, and some nights have been rainy. And on those nights, hundreds, sometimes thousands of amphibians come from the woodlands where they've been hibernating um, all winter to come back to the vernal pools or the spring pools where they actually may have um, been born. And they find a mate and then lay eggs. Uh, if you have a vernal pool near you, um, a big body of water that's kind of like a giant puddle that's not there all the time. Um, that might be a place where you can now look for evidence of some salamanders or different kinds of frogs that are laying their eggs. This particular one is about salamanders, uh, blue spotted salamanders, and I hope that you enjoy it. This is a um, true story and with lots of wonderful facts and information. So. Here we go. Salamander season. Glasses. Salamander season is written by Jennifer Keats Curtis and J. Adam Frederick, and it's illustrated by Shannon Bersani. The, the neat thing about this is that they've got illustrations and photographs, so you'll really be able to see well. March 21st. <coughs> Screech the brakes. There, in front of the car, little blue animals wriggle across the road. The creatures are almost invisible, except for bright yellow spots on their backs that glow like my flashlight. Are they snakes? No, they are spotted salamanders just emerging from hibernation. You can see the asphalt in the road here. Sometimes they have to cross roads in order to get to the vernal pool that they're looking for and that makes it kind of dangerous for them. So we'll talk a little bit about Big Night at the end of the story. On this rainy, chilly night, Dad pulls the car over. We carefully step out. We follow the salamanders into the woods. Soggy sticks snap. Wet brown leaves cover my shoes. We reach the water. I call it a wicked big puddle. Dad says it's actually called a vernal pool. Vernal is another name for spring. We had the vernal equinox on March 21st, maybe even March 20th this year. I hear the loud quack, quack, quack of wood frogs, the whoor of upland chorus frog, and the peep, peep, peep of spring peepers, like in today's message. Then I see them. Dozens of shiny salamanders are marching over rotting logs. They look like wiggly little soldiers. Isn't that a neat collage picture? Illustration. The boy salamanders try, try to get the girl salamanders' attention. They quickly twist their chunky bodies and turn their narrow heads. <clears throat> Some even rub noses. And here's a mass of actual spotted salamanders. March 28th, which was just a couple weeks ago. We head back to the vernal pool. It is time for the salamanders to lay their eggs. On this dark night, herds of females head to that wicked big puddle. It is perfectly safe place to lay eggs because there are no fish. The salamanders push through a thin layer of ice before diving into the cold water. Prr! They lay their eggs in jiggly, jelly bean shaped masses. Each gooey sack container, attached to sticks and reeds, holds hundreds of eggs. I imagine those egg blobs slowly drifting down to the bottom of the pond, tangled in sticks and entwined in leaves. Over time, the small, mushy cases grow as big as softballs and as firm as jello. So that's what you might want to be looking for soon. 
this process takes a few months. So here we are on April 26th. Dad and I wade back into what's left of the evaporating pool. The babies are growing in their egg cases. Now they look like lots of googly eyes. I see green inside the jellied egg sac. Dad says that it's algae and it helps the little salamanders breathe oxygen. <clears throat> Labels for the diagrams are in the photographs. <clears throat> Month later now, May 26th, Dad and I are back at the wicked big puddle, only it's not so wicked big anymore. Have the salamanders hatched? Dad marches into the pool. He lifts the goo and plucks out some eggs to examine. He puts the messy mass in a bucket lid. It looks like white tapioca pudding with specks of pistachio. Oh, baby salamanders are hatching. I see them. They burst out of the egg sac and wriggle around the lid. They have no hind legs yet, so they are terrible swimmers. Since Dad is a scientist, he takes two salamanders back to his lab to study. May 22nd. The baby salamanders are hungry. Dad gives them ghost midges and fairy shrimp, the same tiny animals they would eat in their pool. With only front legs, a tadpole-type tail, and, a pun and puny fins, they can't swim very well. They creep. Our salamanders are lucky. They don't have to worry about newts or baby dragonflies trying to eat them. This is a dragonfly nymph. They live underwater for at least a year before they come, and they can catch little fish even. So they, um, baby salamanders would be good food for them. Here's a newt, another amphibian. June 5th, here we are, near summer. As the spotted salamanders grow, they change color and darken. First they turn gray, then green like an olive. Their whispery gills and short tail fins disappear. Hind legs appear. Now they look more like salamanders than tadpoles. July 5th. The little salamanders are now a navy blue color. They are juveniles and are really growing. They will need to breathe air to live on land. They start to use their lungs for the first time. August 1st. On this warm rainy evening, Dad says it's time to release the salamanders. He puts them in a plastic carrying case and we drive back to the woods. All that's left of the pond is a grassy puddle of water. I open the case and let the salamanders out. They quickly wriggle up the slippery bank toward the forest as if they know exactly where to go. Suddenly both stop. One scoots under a leaf, the other hides under a muddy stick. Are they hungry? As we watch, the one underneath the st stick snags a slug with his sticky tongue. Yuck! <laughs> I love that illustration. Together, Dad and I climb the hill toward home. So long, salamanders. See you next year.